Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So this was posted by XRP Crypto Wolf. Veteran investor Jim Rogers warns of the worst market meltdown ever, guys. He's hedging his bets. Let me read you a little bit of this. Okay, this article from Decrypt, uh, and this is important because it'll give you kind of a sense of where these heavy hitters are at. So Jim Rogers, chairman of Rogers Holdings and famed investor has warned that the repercussions stemming from global central bank policy will be more severe than anything we've witnessed to date. Okay, and here's a quote. He says, the next time we have a problem and we are having it now is going to be the worst in my lifetime. Now, this guy is not a young gentleman. All right, let me keep going. Since the beer flu pandemic shuttered much of the United States economy in March, the U.S. Federal Reserve has gone to unprecedented lengths to shore up a few things, okay? Namely, interest rates have been cut to zero, unlimited quantitative easing was announced, and the central bank has started purchasing corporate bonds and announced an initiative to buy state and local bonds. But according to Rogers, this is just storing up problems, okay? There's only so many band-aids you can put on a problem before it just gets too bad and it becomes a gusher. All the liquidity injected into the financial system precipitated a huge rally since the lows of March 23rd. Uh, the S&P 500 is now trading around 50% higher and showing no signs of slowing down. So he says, for the past 20 years, the Federal Reserve has printed staggering amounts of money and kept driving interest rates lower. They have never been this low. It's not going to work and we're all going to pay a horrible price. And so he was saying that on a podcast, guys. The podcast is listed there. Uh, just a little bit about Jim Rogers. He uh, co-founded the Quantum Fund, aka QMCO, with George Soros back in the 70s. And in the past 40 years, he's become a legendary financial pundit with a wealth of experience to back his claims. So uh, if he's rolling with George Soros, you know this guy isn't messing around. Here's another important quote, guys. It's the first time in recorded history. I think this is the most important quote of this article. It's the first time in recorded history that we have the Japanese, the British, Europeans, and Americans all printing money at the same time. We have this artificial ocean of liquidity, which is making markets do well, but it's not doing much for the economy worldwide. When it ends, we will all pay a terrible price. And so uh, down here, he says that he is hedging with precious metals. He's not interested in Bitcoin, just full disclosure, or cryptocurrencies. He thinks many of them are scams and thinks they could go to zero. Um, but uh, the reason I wanted to show you this article was just because of his sentiment towards the market, the way it's looking and what we could expect. Now, I don't agree with his stance on cryptocurrencies because I do think, or rather I know they are going to be an important hedge against the current market, and statistics have proven that. I'm going to show you guys that later on. I'm going to continue on with this, guys, posted by Michael at Val5Links. Chinese steelmakers are using blockchain to break dollar dependence. So countries that have relied on the dollar are now trying to find creative ways to break that dependence. And so Chinese firms could look to end their dollar dependence in international trade deals using blockchain technology, with the nation's steel industry looking to purchase raw materials in Chinese fiat, the RMB, rather than the American greenback. Per a report from China Economic Net, an increasing number of Chinese iron ore importers are turning to blockchain-powered cross-border platforms to conduct RMB trade deals, potentially doing away with the USD, the usual currency of choice in international trading. Now, this example here, using blockchain-powered cross-border platforms to do trade deals where they do not have to use the USD. That is not only exactly what Ripple is doing, but that is exactly where XRP comes into play, guys. So, XRP and Ripple, not named in this article, but because of all the partnerships they have worldwide, because of how they're positioned now, I think we are going to see a lot more of this take place. A new preponderance of blockchain-powered cross-border import and export platforms is allowing some of the world's biggest iron ore miners to sell the material, the chief component of steel, directly to Chinese firms without the need for the American dollar. Also, guys, there's the issue here of uh, blockchain-powered integration with regards to the supply chain. So uh, as we know, or maybe some of you guys know, maybe some of you don't know this, VeChain, that organization, uh, does deal with supply chain management over the blockchain. Uh, so the VET token, uh, a big part of that. Thought this was interesting, guys. I will link this article in the description if you want to read further. Uh, but a good example now pointing to uh, what certain countries may do in order to get a little creative. Because if the dollar is being artificially pumped, 
Why would you want to deal with it when you can deal with your own currency uh, with other countries that might want to use the RMB, uh, especially in the case of, let's say, China and Russia? Okay, they are big trade partners. Why would they want to use the USD to trade? So these are questions we have to ask ourselves fundamentally just, you know, with regards to just logics and trade flow. So all these Bitcoin maximalists who are saying, you know, uh, over the last few years, XRP does not have a purpose. It's a centralized crap coin. It'll never go up. It's a scam, yada, yada, yada. Guys, it does solve a problem, and therefore, in my opinion, I think it'll be useful for problems just like this. Trade deals between countries that uh, are losing faith in the greenback in droves. So thanks so much, Michael, for posting that. Crypto market, guys, looking interesting right now. The market cap is at 384.4 billion. Bitcoin dominance down to 59%. Bitcoin trading at 12,286, up 3.45%. Ethereum trading at 431, up only 0.78%. And XRP trading at 0.313, up 3.37% in the last 24 hours. And Chainlink, although it had climbed uh, in ranking to number five, it is now down 11.86%. So, what comes up must go down. I'm sure a lot of you guys have had a great experience trading link. Just be careful because I think this FOMO pump is a bubble. I'm going to get to that later on in the video. Right now, I'm going to talk about this, though. Michael, uh, sent me this other tweet here. The Bank of England will take part in a key meeting tomorrow to discuss central bank digital currencies. So they're on target with their 2020 agenda. The Bank of England will take part in a key meeting tomorrow to discuss central bank digital currencies and their possible infrastructural designs hosted by Global Central Banking Think Tank, the official Monetary and Financial Institutions Forum on August 19th. The roundtable will involve the BOE's senior finance specialist, Simon Scorer, alongside delegates from the Swiss National Bank, ING Nederland, and the Hungarian National Bank, the CEO of enterprise-focused blockchain platform uh, Cypherium. Right, Cypherium. Sky Guo will also join the discussion. The key focus of the meeting will be to tackle ways in which blockchain technology can benefit various models for CBDC. This includes the use of smart contracts uh, with designs for programmable money and models for interoperable blockchain networks, both within and beyond national borders. Now, we know the Bank of England, the, uh, the Central Bank of England, has deemed XRP not a security, at least with uh, their laws over there and uh, that technology. So they're positive with XRP. They're positive with RippleNet. When they're talking about interoperable blockchain networks, to me, that sounds like uh, Ripple will likely be a central focus in this discussion. Google said that as long as CBDCs remain in their early phases of conception, now is the time to debate the advantages and disadvantages of infrastructural ideas, especially related to how these instruments will interact and operate with each other. Each central bank delegate of BOE Simon Score, uh, Magyar, Nemzeti Banks, Chief Digital Officer Anko Sambati, ING's blockchain team IT specialist Cies van Weich, and Swiss National Bank governing board members Thomas Moser will present their institution's findings from internal CBDC research. So the Bank of England gearing up uh, to have a more meaningful discussion about CBDCs and how uh, they will integrate within their system and uh, the importance of interoperability specifically uh, for other countries because we don't just do business within our own country. Of course, trade has been happening since the beginning of time and since the channels for trade have become more vast over the centuries, it is inevitable that global trade will continue to occur, although uh, most countries want to keep their own fiats and what better way to conduct trade than through through the blockchain with CBDCs and an interoperable system that is able to handle all the different currencies and uh, provide the liquidity needed in order to conduct these transactions. Again, guys, I'm not saying it, but I'm saying it, namely Ripple and XRP. So I'm going to continue moving along. Uh, this another one from XRP Crypto Wolf. Ripple has been recognized as the fastest growing company, one of the fastest growing companies in the United States. And I believe it is ranked uh, 123rd. Yes, that's right. 123rd out of 5,000 businesses. So they have been recognized as one of the fastest growing companies by Inc., one of America's leading business magazines. You guys can see down here, number 123 out of uh, the list features 5,000 businesses. And they have witnessed a 3,039% growth according to the magazine's estimations the xrp affiliated blockchain company which was created in 2012 has managed to achieve a whopping 3039 percent growth over the last three years and that gives you the median growth here of only 165 percent 
Its RippleNet network, which connects major banks and financial institutions, surpassed 300 customers last year. Ripple's valuation swelled to $10 billion in December 2019 after wrapping up its $200 million Series C funding round spearheaded by New York-based Tetragon Financial Group. So a lot of this information uh, I've reported on in the past, but it looks as though even just from these metrics from Inc. Magazine uh, that they are growing exponentially, the 123rd place. And again, uh, this is not uh, just fintech or blockchain companies. These are all the companies in the United States and Ripple ranking 123, not bad. Again, guys, they've grown because there is a need to solve this cross-border issue. Okay, they have spent the time, they have gone on business trips uh, around the world trying to get it through the heads of governments, worldwide governments and central banks over the last five years to understand the concept of RippleNet and the beauty of the XRP token and how uh, liquidity can be sourced essentially instantly. So huge congratulations to Ripple for making the list. 123 out of 5,000 is no small feat. And if you guys are eyeing the XRP token, I know some of you guys are, this is XRP on the weekly. Uh, and over the last few weeks, we have seen some nice growth over here. Of course, the market has been going up. If I bring up Bitcoin, we can see this similar for Bitcoin. Bitcoin has seen some significant growth as well. And since this is on the weekly, uh, this doesn't show you the $12,300 level, which we have broached. Now we have to break 14,000 approximately, 13,900 uh, in order to continue that uptrend. And it looks like Bitcoin is doing just that. But I wanted to talk about XRP because some of you guys are eyeing it, wondering if it's a good deal. Some of you guys are saying, well, you know, I'm uh, new into crypto. Want to get into something that'll yield me big profits? Well, guys, I saw this from MacAttack XRP Ripple Sentiment Analysis. The days of accumulating XRP below $1 are numbered. So right now XRP is trading just above 30 cents, but it might not be for long, okay? So this article here was based on this tweet from Joker at Kia Crypto, and he is suggesting that XRP is set to hit $8 and then $14 based on Elliott Wave Theory. So according to Joker, not his real name, of course, a renowned cryptocurrency analyst and definitely an XRP bull, the third largest crypto asset is soon heading to $14, according to a recent tweet by the analyst. Now, he gives a bit of a breakdown here on his tweet, uh, and he shows you the chart, and it looks like this chart, we can't really see because this is a screen grab, but it looks like this chart is on a longer time frame, uh, and I can see what he's doing here. Now, guys, we've wondered about XRP price in the past. Where could it go? And I have done models uh, to predict different uh, prices price points for XRP. I'm going to link a video with one of my uh, more recent analyzations of XRP up here, uh, but let's look over Joker's prediction now. So first he says he uses Elliott Wave Theory, and um, I don't want to get too much into Elliott Wave Theory in this particular video, but I do want to link this resource. Now, for those of you guys who are new to the channel, uh, I always link everything I show in the video in the description of the video. So I'm going to link this video and this is a very short video, four minutes, 22 seconds. It really does describe Elliott wave theory um, in a nutshell. For beginner investors, for beginner traders, I'll link that in the description. But just to give you guys a little bit more information on that, what is Elliott Wave Theory? The Elliott Wave Theory was developed by this guy named Ralph Nelson Elliott to describe price movement in financial markets, in which he observed and identified reoccurring fractal wave patterns. Waves can be identified in stock price movements and in consumer behavior. Investors trying to profit from a market trend could be described as riding a wave, a large strong movement by homeowners to replace their existing mortgages with new ones that have better terms is also called the refinancing wave. So uh, key takeaways here, Elliott Wave Theory is a method of technical analysis that looks for reoccurring long-term price patterns related to persistent changes in investor sentiment and psychology. And guys, this is the thing you have to remember with uh, trading in general. This is all psychology. I like to call this psychology mapped out on a page. When buyer sentiment is high, you see more green and more upward momentum. When buyer sentiment is low, you see the opposite, more red and more downward momentum. But anyway, getting back to Kia Crypto and his uh, prediction here. So he does show uh, this chart and we can see uh, the first wave here. Second wave was this long bear market. Third wave, the uptrend. Fourth wave, a correction. And then the fifth wave up to $14 approximately. Now, uh, just to give you guys a simple analysis of this, I'm going to throw on a Fibonacci just uh, going from the top here. And I know I've done this in the past uh, for those of you guys who watch my channel. But for those of you guys who may be new, this is kind of where he's going with this. Okay, you take a Fibonacci retracement, take it from the top of the bull market here, and go right back down to the trough here. And what happens is you get some zones uh, that uh, tend to line up with potential target points. 
Now, uh, in, in a former video, I had already kind of demarcated some of these top lines here, and this is what Joker is suggesting. Now, uh, you guys can see, if I put this Fibonacci from the top of the trend to the bottom of the trough, you can see some of these zones already line up, like this one here hits this line, the 0.236 line. This is on the weekly, by the way, so uh, if we put it on the daily, you might be able to see uh, more targets being met. But ultimately up here, we have these two price targets here. Uh, this line here, which I will delete for a second, and this line as well, I'll delete that one too. Uh, and so what he's suggesting is that the wave pattern will form as such. And I think I can actually get a wave. Can I get a wave? Can I get a wave? Elliott wave, does this work here? The five wave impulse. So we got wave one here. I don't know if you guys can see that if it's not uh, thick enough. Wave one was the bull run back in 2017. And again, he's looking at these waves on the longer time frame. This is a weekly chart. So the second wave was coming down uh, to the bear market, the bottom of the bear market here, or let's put it here. Now we're starting to see an uptrend. And what he's suggesting is this third wave will come up to about $8, which is roughly hitting this line here. Okay, I'm in the middle of the wave, so I can't show you something else right now. But let me do the fourth and then the fifth. The fourth line corrects a little bit. And then the fifth line will go all the way up, and that is uh, going to be the shortest leg up here to about this top trend line here. So we've got the third wave hitting here, and then after the fifth wave, uh, what he's suggesting is we could go up to this top line, which would be, in effect, uh, roughly $14. It's about $13.57, to be precise. And this third wave here would bring us to $8.37, to be precise. So $8 and $13, those are the two, or rather $14, those are the two targets that he is eyeing in this prediction. Just to give you guys a sense of where that XRP trend could go next. And again, guys, this is going to be over the long term. We're not going to see this tomorrow. This could be by the end of 2021. So buckle up, enjoy the ride, invest as much as you can afford to lose because you don't want to overextend yourself either. We're gearing up and ready to go for this crypto rally. And so this is just the beginning. I wanted to bring up this tweet here, guys. This is from XRP Crypto Wolf. Digital currencies, public and private, present and future by DBS Bank. So uh, this uh, document here just came out this month with regards to digital currencies presented by the DBS Bank and their group research uh, division. And they talk a lot about CBDCs and uh, cryptocurrencies in general. You guys can see here they have XRP listed on their chart uh, along with the top cryptos by market cap. Uh, and, they're, and they're just showing us uh, stuff like trading volume and how that has increased over the years uh, significantly, actually. Another thing down here, uh, no, no, sorry, not that one uh, down here, right. This from the same report and uh, XRP Crypto Wolf has highlighted this part down here. Together with its real-time payment system, the Federal Reserve is well-placed to consolidate its position in the U.S. payment system, supplementing various private sector payment initiatives. The Fed is providing strong fraud detection, constant liquidity, and interoperability with private sector payment platforms, which will help standardize the system of digital payments nationwide. Now, to me, that sounds like they want to use RippleNet and eventually utilize XRP. We know, for example, that DBS Bank has partnered with Ripple. This from back in 2019. DBS Bank labels Ripple as the cheapest way to send cross-border payments. So sorry, is that partnership confirmed? Um, I'm not sure if the partnership is confirmed, so I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. Let me know down in the comments if you know for sure. However, back a year ago, they did do a test here and they labeled RippleNet the cheapest way to send cross-border payments at least. So I saw this article, thought this was pointing to share with you guys, and now a year later, uh, coming out with a report uh, describing something that does sound a lot like RippleNet and uh, that will be using XRP because they do talk about uh, the interoperability of the system. Not only that, they mention uh, this term here, constant liquidity, uh, which XRP has the ability to provide. So wanted to mention that. We've also got this guy's, uh, this from Martin at Martin CP Volk on Twitter, South Korean banks to launch crypto services before the year is out. Uh, so more news here coming out of South Korea. And uh, we know the United States has just recently announced that uh, banks within the country can custody cryptos for their clients. And now multiple South Korean banks could launch crypto custody services by the end of 2020. And this represents a significant change of tone. The banking sector is now apparently warm to cryptocurrencies in South Korea. So uh, here's a quote. I know that multiple commercial banks plan to launch crypto custodial services before the end of the year. Although there are differences in schedules, other banks will launch services before March 2021 at the latest. So they're looking to aim by the end of 2020 and uh, hopefully latest uh, by March 2021. So by first quarter of 2021. Great news there coming out of South Korea because this is just great for the entire crypto community worldwide. More institutional adoption uh, throughout more countries is going to boost the price up. And this this number up here 
will look very, very small today in comparison to what it will be, in my opinion, 12 months from now when we get real money pumping into the market. I think uh, in the last crypto bull run, well, I know in the last crypto bull run, we hit uh, over 800 billion. And so reaching, uh, I think, a $1 trillion crypto market cap uh, is not unlikely, to be honest. I, I think that that is quite doable. I think we can hit that uh, in the next 12 months if this bull run continues to move. I want to keep moving along here, guys. I got a lot today. XRP as bridge currency accounts for more than one-fifth of all transactions on RippleNet. So uh, this brought up by Ashish Birla, Ripple's SVP of products, and he says that uh, the on-demand liquidity portion, uh, this is the company's solution for conducting frictionless cross-border payments, is responsible for more than 20% of the total RippleNet volume. This serves as a testament to Birla's claim that blockchain is not just a promising technology, but it actually is being used. And you guys can see here uh, ODL over the last uh, several quarters of 2019 and into 2020 we're seeing growth there on the xrpl dozens of ripple partners use xrp so this article just goes on giving us some uh, some more information about that outlining uh, just some bullet points of uh, things that have happened with ripple the company guys again i will link this article in the description if you want to read further i saw this from xrp crypto wolf just going to this point here with ashish burla svp of product and corporate development ashish burla also said we're seeing a melding of the old world and the new it's only a matter of time before banks offer custody services, uh, which they now have done. So this is an old quote, acquire companies with those capabilities and offer crypto lending as they see consumer interest in DeFi. So DeFi, that's decentralized finance. That's a new thing that's on the horizon. And uh, this is the same chart just from the last article, uh, but I wanted to show you some of this. So total stablecoin supply has grown by leaps and bounds since 2017. We are seeing a influx of stablecoin printing, which uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, but from 2020, January 2020 onward, look at that exponential growth in stablecoin supply. And uh, here, the weekly DEX volume as well has seen uh, some exponential growth in 2020, July and August 2020. We've also got down here total value locked in DeFi, and that has also grown since about uh, May or June 2020 as well. So a lot of exponential growth here, as you guys can see over the last couple of months and I think it's only going to grow more you know it's not unusual to see thousands of percentage gains in the crypto market and uh, I have a feeling we are on the precipice of something really really wild here 2017 was great but I think 2020 2021 will be even better Wanted to bring this up too uh, from the VeChain Foundation. Now, uh, VeChain is another coin that I recently got into, and uh, I'm interested to see the partnerships with VeChain. This with regards to VeChain and them partnering with Grant Thornton Blockchain Cyprus to provide advanced blockchain solutions. So Grant Thornton Cypress, they are one of the world's largest professional uh, service networks for independent accounting and consulting member firms, and they're partnering with VeChain. This partnership aims to pair and utilize VeChain's advanced blockchain solutions for various industries among the network of Grant Thornton Cypress clients. The prospective clients would be heavyweights of their respective industries, which spans across food, pharmaceutical, logistics, and automotive sectors, among others. And for those of you guys who do not know about VeChain, you should do more research on it. They are going to be a powerhouse I think for um, supply chain management and uh, tracking products and items for all those companies around the world that do global trade. Think about that for a second. Not only that, uh, they are a Chinese company and uh, you got to think of the exporting that comes out of China. China's already uh, said that uh, they love the VeChain initiative and so many companies in China already using this. This could get really, really big, really, really fast. Bridging trust using blockchain technology. So in September 2018, Grant Thornton Cypress grew its technology services with the launch of a new blockchain service line. This blockchain department was initiated in collaboration with Grant Thornton's network with presence in over 135 countries. Just going to go down here. This partnership now opens the door to thousands of companies to adopt blockchain, including uh, PwC and DNVGL. VeChain has established partnerships with many leading enterprises across various industries and continuous improvements and adoption of its one-stop data BAAS platform, VeChain Toolchain. So uh, VeChain, guys, another very, very interesting project if uh, you want to get into something that uh, I think has a, uh, a very, very high potential of doing well. This is uh, the VeChain chart on the weekly. Uh, and you guys can see it's up now. Uh, by the way, everything I do say on this channel is not financial advice. I'm not guaranteeing you guys any gains. I'm just letting you know what I'm interested in. And uh, if you are interested too, maybe you should take a look into it. Right now, VeChain is trading just under two cents at 0.0198 cents.
And I saw this on Twitter. Uh, Yana One Trick tagged me in this. The Exchange Uphold is evaluating listing the Spark token. So uh, for those of you guys who do not know, Uphold is a wallet service, and they are thinking of listing the Spark token. Now there was some news the other day that the Flare Network is going to actually give XRP holders one-to-one -one Flare tokens for as much XRP as you hold. Here's the tweet to that effect, Yana. Uh, screen grab this and uh, it has to do with the flare network guys I did a video on the flare network all listed up here for those of you guys who haven't seen it But down here number four We will announce all exchanges that intend to pass on the spark token to their clients and uphold saying uh, our team is evaluating And we hope to have an update soon so uphold potentially will indeed provide flare tokens for uh, XRP holders So again guys if you have a hundred thousand XRP that means you will get a hundred thousand flare tokens just for holding XRP so I thought that was interesting. You know, the more tokens you hold, the more possibilities there are. And of course, we can't all be holding everything. You know, we don't have unlimited money. And when we do find something great, we want to hang on to it. I feel like it's a psychological um, problem. Not, no, not problem. I'm going to call it a psychological mistake in some ways to keep hodling when you know this thing just can't keep going up forever. I remember people back in the 2017 bull run when they saw their XRP going to two and three dollars thinking to themselves, well, if Bitcoin can go to 20,000, why can't XRP go to a thousand even? Well, 2017 just wasn't the time for XRP, but I think what's going on with Link today is similar in some ways. Now I saw this from Crypto Whale and he posts a thread on the chain link bubble. That's right guys, the chain link bubble. This thing isn't going up forever. Uh, we can already see it now. Chain link was down 11.86% in the last 24 hours. And uh, some of you guys may have done well on chain link, but I'm gonna go through this just to give you guys a sense of um, maybe a dose of reality in some ways if you're new to the space. You know, I'm not trying to be pessimistic on Link. I think if you guys made profits, that's really, really good. Uh, full disclosure, I did not invest in Link. I only invest in coins that I know enough about. So uh, I wanted to read you this. For months, we've watched Link grow exponentially. Its price has shot well beyond its intrinsic value through DeFi hype and greed. This thread will touch on some points I think all holders should read before falling victim to the bubble. So again, guys, this from Crypto Whale on Twitter. If you're not following him, I suggest you follow him. He posts some really good stuff. First, let's discuss how bubbles are formed. A bubble is where investors buy an asset, not for its fundamental value, but because they plan to resell at a higher price to the next investor. And so uh, we can see this graph here just describing optimism, excitement, thrill, euphoria. And then when the trend goes down, we start uh, experiencing feelings of uh, denial, feel, desperation. Right at the bottom down here, it's despondency and depression. And then as we're seeing that price move up, hope, relief, and optimism again, lining up with optimism over here. So some great resources here for new traders. Uh, he goes on to say, I'm going to go over several aspects that take place during bubbles and are present in Chainlink along with many other DeFi projects. So number one, extrapolation, is projecting past data into the future on the same basis. If prices have risen X rate in the past, prices will continue to rise at X rate forever. Now, it's interesting he says this because prices and trends do tend to repeat themselves, but not forever. And I think that is the key point here. Extrapolation causes investors to overbid risky assets in an attempt to capture the same return rates. Number two, herding is an aspect of behavioral finance. It is the tendency humans have to do what the rest of the herd is doing even if as an individual they know they are doing it irrationally. The dot-com boom was another example of herding. Number three, celebrities begin shilling projects. And then he talks a little bit about uh, celebrities talking about coins. This guy here, Dave Portnoy, waited until Link pumped about 40,000% before telling his 2 million followers to buy. So that can get a little dangerous, guys. For the mania phase, media shouts far and wide, average investors catch wind that something big is happening and they want in. The price starts to go up and inexperienced investors think it'll keep going up forever. Your parents are now listening to the band. He's using that as an example of, it's not cool anymore, guys. Get out while the party is still good. And this, uh, just another graph, uh, similar to the one up here, uh, showing the phases of psychology. And again, guys, I will link this in the description if you want to, if I'm, if I'm going over this too quickly, if you want to read these charts in a little more detail. Uh, but I think he's got a point here. So complete denial. This is seen by most link holders. They will refuse to sell because holding in the past was successful. We remember vividly what happened to the same people who did that during the 2017 
ICO bubble. Stuck bag holding forever. Number six, no exit strategy. If you're trading, it's extremely important that you have an entry and exit strategy. I've noticed with bubbles, no one has a realistic exit strategy. They keep waiting for it to rise, then will eventually sell when it's plummeting. So guys, this, this can get pretty scary, especially if you don't have an exit strategy. I did a video recently, uh, back a couple of months ago, where uh, I gave you guys this resource here. It's basically just an Excel spreadsheet, and uh, if you plug in the values here, it will fill out these columns, and it'll give you a bit of a framework to plan your strategy appropriately. So if you wanted to cash out 20%, or 40%, or 55%, or 75% of your cryptocurrencies, for example, let's say you have 1.5 Bitcoin, it pops in the number here, and it gives you guys all the values. So let's say you had 100 thousand XRP or uh, 500,000 V chain and uh, let's say you also had uh, I don't know 120 BNB coin what it'll do is it'll automatically put in the values here so let's say you wanted to cash out 55% of your crypto that means that you would cash out 0.825 of your Bitcoin 55,000 XRP 275,000 VET and 66 BNB and this would be the profit you would take for a total amount of $648,450 now I've given them targets and you can change these targets as well to whatever you want I've made them quite conservative Bitcoin at 100,000, but you can change that to 150,000 per BTC. Uh, I've only put XRP at $5, but some people might think it'll go to $10, uh, VChain, so on and so forth. Anyways, guys, I talk more in depth about having a plan. Again, I will link this video up here, and uh, in the description of this video, you can find this resource. Wanted to get back to this though. So that was number six, have an exit strategy. Number seven, marketing. Investors eager to pump their bags will often exaggerate things. With Link, they often brag about dozens of partnerships. Google partnership turned out to be fake, nothing more than a tutorial. Most projects they are partnered with are DeFi scams. Coin supply concentration, considering 70% of the coin supply is held by nine whales, it's likely they will begin dumping on investors once they're ready to take profits. You don't want to be buying holding during this this. It happened to most other coins in the past. He finishes this off by saying, I hope this thread could explain my rationale as to why I think Chainlink is in a bubble. We will see within a few months whether I was right or not. Predicting the top is almost impossible, but we know how it will end. Once the hype subsides, panic will take over. Again, guys, refer to those charts if you are new to this, and uh, I link everything in the description uh, for ease of use to help you guys find that. And again, this is just another reason why you should invest in projects that matter. Invest in reputable cryptocurrencies that you know can solve problems because those are the ones that are going to have staying power that'll hold the most value. Anyways, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.